In this next video in our Crash Course Trigonometry series, we're going to talk about how to find the value of a trigonometric function of an acute angle. So far, all of the things that we've said about trigonometric functions have been in the abstract. We've drawn an, uh, an abstract triangle and talked about opposites, adjacents, and hypotenuses and things like that. But now we're actually going to find the value of a trigonometric function of a specific angle. So that's really the question that we're trying to answer. And we've got two important cases. We've got what we call special angles, where we can actually figure out the value exactly using geometry. And then we've got general angles, where we're going to use the calculator to find an approximate value. So first, let's talk about some special angles. So one of the cases that we want to talk about are 30 and 60 degree angles. And the way we're going to use geometry here is to start with an equilateral triangle and split it in half. So an equilateral triangle, in this case, we're drawing this so that the lengths of the sides are one. So each of these three sides is exactly one unit. And one of the things you might remember from geometry is that when we have an equilateral triangle, each of these angles is going to measure 60 degrees. So we've got 60 degrees down here, 60 degrees here. And then if we split the triangle in half, these angles up here are both going to be 30 degrees. All right. So now what can we say about the trig values of these functions? Well, if I look at the left half of this equilateral triangle, I took that segment of length one and split it in half. So this base of this triangle is gonna be one half. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, the height of this triangle is gonna have the property that one half squared plus the height squared equals one squared. And when we do some algebra and work that out, the H is gonna work out to be the square root of three fourths, which we can also write as the square root of three over two. So that's this height here is going to be square root of 3 over 2. And now we can use the definitions of the six trigonometric functions that we've talked about. So in that left half triangle, the sine of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1. So that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 degrees is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So 1 half divided by 1, which is going to work out to be 1 half. The tangent of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that'll be square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is going to work out to be the square root of 3. If I multiply top and bottom by 2, those 2s will go away, and we'll just get the square root of 3, and so on. As we talked about in the last video, once we know the value of one of these trigonometric functions, we can use the fundamental identities to figure out the other five. So I'll just do sine, cosine, and tangent here since those are the more common functions, but you could also figure out cotangent, secant, and cosecant using the methods that I discussed in the previous video. What about 30 degrees? Well, if I tip that triangle onto its side or use the properties of complementary angles that we talked about in the previous video, I can also figure out the sine, cosine, tangent, etc. of 30 degrees. So the sine of 30 degrees works out to be 1 half. The cosine of 30 degrees works out to be the square root of 3 over 2. Again, notice the relationship here between the sine of 60 and the cosine of 30. Those are complementary angles. The sine of 30 and the cosine of 60, again, those are complementary angles. And again, using identities or just using that triangle tipped on its side, we can figure out that the tangent of 30 degrees is going to be square root of 3 over 3 or just 1 over the square root of 3. Again, either of those is acceptable to me in my personal classes, but your teacher may insist that you rationalize denominators, in which case you might prefer to leave it as square root of 3 over 3. But those are the same thing. Another special angle has to do with taking a square and splitting it in half. So again, something that we hopefully know about squares is that all of the angles of a square are 90 degrees. And so we're going to assume that the lengths of the sides of the square here are 1. And then when we split the square in half, that's going to split those 90 degree angles into 45 degree angles. Again, using the Pythagorean theorem, if I have this diagonal here, that's going to have the property that 1 squared plus 1 squared equals the diagonal squared. That's going to be with a little bit of algebra. Tell me that the diagonal is the square root of 2. So now I can figure out sine, cosine, etc. of 45 degrees using either of these two triangles that I have. Let's just use the bottom half of the triangle. So we would say that the sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 1 over the square root of 2. And again, if you want to rationalize that denominator, that's the same as square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees will work out to also be 1 over the square root of 2, adjacent over hypotenuse, which again we can write as the square root of 2 over 2. 
tangent of 45 degrees will be opposite over adjacent, 1 over 1, which just works out to be 1. And again, I'll just say etc. here because, as we talked about in the previous video, we can figure out the values of the other three trig functions pretty easily using our identities. So here I have a summary of all of the six values of the six trigonometric functions of these three special angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. There really isn't anything that makes these angles any better than any other angles, other than the fact that we can figure out these values exactly just using geometry principles. By the way, I'll mention that we can use other shapes. You could take a regular pentagon and divide it up into triangles and figure out the values of sine, cosine, etc. of angles that would show up naturally. Those would be angles like 72 degrees, 36 degrees, and so on. You can figure out those values using pentagons. That gets a little bit far afield for what we want to do in this video, but that's also something that you could do just using geometry. But of course, not every angle is going to correspond to a nice geometric shape. So I, what if I want to know the sine of 27.4 degrees? There isn't necessarily a nice shape that has that as one of its angles where I could use geometry to figure out that value. That's where the calculator comes in handy. So if you have a scientific or graphing calculator, that calculator probably has buttons for sine, cosine, and tangent. The most important thing when you're using a calculator to figure out the values of trigonometric functions is knowing whether your calculator is in degree mode or radian mode. And how to switch back and forth between those modes is going to depend on the model of your calculator. So you might need to look up some instructions on how to do that, um, or you might, or might already know how to do that. If you want to compute cotangent, cosecant, and secant, you typically don't have specific buttons for those functions on your calculator, so you'll just use those reciprocal identities. So if you wanted to know the secant of 37 degrees, you would figure out the cosine of 37 degrees and then take the reciprocal of that value to figure out the secant. So that'd be the process you'd go through there. One important note about the calculator. You might notice that on your calculator you have a button labeled sine to the minus one, cosine to the minus one, tan to the minus one. And you might also know that those negative exponents, for example, if I wrote x to the minus one, that means one over x. But when we say sine to the negative one, unfortunately, and I, and I know that this is confusing, but unfortunately that does not mean one over sine. That does not mean cosecant. In fact, those buttons are for inverse trigonometric functions, which is something we're going to talk about later on in this video series. So don't look at those negative one buttons and think, oh, that's going to give me a reciprocal because unfortunately it's not. Okay, so what have we talked about in this video? We talked about trig functions of those special angles, 30, 45, and 60 degrees, and how we figure out those values uh, using geometry. My recommendation, and this is what I tell my students when I teach this topic, is not to worry as much about memorizing that chart that I had earlier in the video, but rather if you can just remember that those values come from an equilateral triangle and a square, you can always just reconstruct the values. So memorizing is handy, of course, but if you ever get to the point where you've forgotten the value of a trig function of one of those special angles and you need to reconstruct it, it's nice to know the geometry of how to build it. The other thing we talked about is how to use the calculator to compute trig function values of so-called not special angles, um, and we talked about how to do that as well. So next time we're going to talk about some applications of these trig functions. Now that we know how to compute the sine, cosine, etc. of any angle, we're going to use to we're going to see how to use that to solve certain application problems. I'll see you then.